Welcome to another amazing week of social studies for grade four. Today, we will be jumping into social studies materials for the week of May 25th. My name is Mr. Crispins, and I'll be your teacher for the next few minutes. In preparation for our work today, please make sure you have accessed your social studies materials on your Schoology course, or at the very least, double check to make sure that it's for the May, week of May 25th. If you don't have access to your device right now, grab a sheet of paper and just follow along. Let's get started. Before we jump into our lesson today, let's take a quick look at our lesson objective. Today, we will be conducting research about the physical characteristics of the United States and gathering relevant information from multiple sources in order to construct an explanation using claims and evidence from multiple sources. Let's take a closer look. Today, we're going to be conducting research, and we all know what research is as we investigate something. We are going to be looking at physical characteristics of the United States. Now, remember, physical characteristics are characteristics that are not man-made. Things like rivers, lakes, oceans, mountains, you get the idea. And we're going to be doing that from multiple sources. We know we will be looking at a variety of sources today, but then once we gather that information from our sources, we are going to construct an explanation using claims and evidence from our sources. Let's have a quick reminder about claims before we move on. Now, when we say a claim, what we're really talking about is a specific statement that can be argued and supported with evidence. We do this all the time, and we don't even think about it. But here's an example. Bike riders should be required by law to wear helmets. Or students who read before going to bed sleep better than students who play on a device before bed. These are very specific statements that we can go find evidence to support each statement. A claim is not and should not be a personal opinion. For example, pepperoni pizza is better than cheese pizza. A personal opinion uses words like better or best and they're subject to interpretation, and it's really just your own opinion. Natural resources are something that we use that comes from nature. Sometimes we use natural resources that are considered raw, and these are things that aren't processed, things like water. But other times we change the natural resource to make it useful for us. For example, we may cut down trees to make lumber, and then we might take that lumber to make houses, but we might also make pencils. A pencil comes from a natural resource. Can you think of any raw natural resources that you can find in Maryland? For example, I know Maryland has the Chesapeake Bay so and lots of rivers, so we probably have some water. And we also have a lot of trees, so we have wood. What other things can you think of that we have in Maryland? Take a minute and jot down a list on your paper. Now you still may be writing and that's okay, but we're gonna keep going. And I was thinking, what did you write down? And although I can't hear what you're saying, I was thinking about some things that you may have written down. And maybe you wrote down something like crabs and fish. Maryland is known for their seafood and we have lots and lots of crabs and we have fish like rockfish. We also have different stones and rocks. Uh, if you've ever walked by a river, sometimes your boots might get muddy, and maybe it's mud, but also sometimes we have a lot of clay in our soil, so we have clay. If you go and you drive to Ocean City, you drive by a lot of farmland, so we have a lot of good soil for farming. And maybe you wrote down just wildlife and things like deer. Maybe you wrote down something else. Can you think of any natural resource that Maryland doesn't have? Maryland is really unique. But just like other states, we depend on each other because of our differences. Let's dig deeper into why our states are so unique. Today, we will be comparing physical and environmental characteristics of different regions across the United States to explain why environmental characteristics may vary from region to region. In order to do this, we will need to gather information from different sources to help develop a claim and an explanation to answer our essential question. For today's lesson, we're going to try to respond to our essential question, 
which is, why might there be environmental differences in different regions across the United States? And when we're talking about environmental differences, which is just circling here at the bottom, what we're really thinking about is why a specific area has a certain climate, wildlife, or even vegetation. When we conduct research, which is something we've probably done before, we are really conducting an investigation. Think of a detective who is trying to solve a crime. They ask different people what happened and try to capture evidence to help solve the crime. Historical research, or in our case, geographic research, isn't that much different. Sometimes historians conduct interviews, examine documents, explore maps, and even use math to examine the findings of a scientist. Like a detective, we have to be careful about the sources we use. Sometimes sources can mislead you with information that is not important or not related to what you're looking for. And usually one source doesn't tell you the whole story. When researching a topic, we always need to ask ourselves how this source that we're currently looking at will help us answer our essential question. Is it relevant? As we investigate and research, Looking at different sources, remember to ask yourself how this source could help me write about why there are environmental differences across the United States. The United States is the fourth largest nation in the entire world. We have 3 million square miles of land and nearly 12,000 miles of coastline along the two oceans, which we border, the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. And our country is also really rich in natural resources. Although our country is rich with these natural resources, our states must work together to make sure all of our goods, services, and resources are met for everyone. For example, in Kansas, they probably don't have access to a lot of great seafood, whereas in Maryland, we do. So we could trade with Kansas or supply Kansas with seafood if Kansas gives us something back in return. So here is a regional map of the United States. We can see that by looking at its title. When we're referencing a region, which is this word down here in red, a region is an area that all share a common feature. Sometimes that feature is geographic location, like up here being in the Northeast, that's geographically all close together. Sometimes it's based on climate or some other characteristic. If you're a fan of professional sports, sometimes our regions are based off of um, your sports teams. So let's take a look at this map and our regions. Now remember, when we're looking at our map, we always start by looking at the title, which we circled. And this title of the map is Regions of the United States. And I also see that this map is colorful. I see purple and orange and pink, and this looks like a bluish color and green. Um, so I'm wondering what each color may mean, and the way I can find out is just by referencing our map legend or our map key that's at the bottom. I see that Maryland, which is right here, is green. And it looks like down here that if it's in the green, it is part of the northeast. If I look out west and I see this purple area, this big purple area out here, purple area is the west. And I see that different shades of purple mean different things. So for example, the light purple, which is this space right here in the middle, that says the Rocky Mountains. And then the three darker colored purple ones are all part of the Pacific. So it looks like this map is using location as its determining factor for which region uh, and where regions are located. Now we are going to start looking at different sources. And a source is just a document that's going to help us answer our essential question. And as we analyze each source, we need you to think about and be conscious of how each source is going to help us answer that essential question about why there might be differences in environmental characteristics across our country. So I'll be covering an extra source labeled Source 3, the Land and Resource Map of the United States. Now, don't get concerned if your teacher didn't share this with you in class, because this is an extension and it's not required. But I think it might be helpful for, to support your work and the work that we're doing here today. So let's get started and check out some sources. Source 1, 
climate and vegetation regions of the United States. So the United States is a large country with a variety of different climate and vegetation regions. Vegetation or plant life contributes to different jobs and available resources across the United States. These climate and vegetation regions have significant impacts on how people live and use the land. And I see two maps on our screen and these maps have come from our digital resource, Maps 101. So let's take a look at our two maps. I see each map has a title and map one, and I'm just gonna call this one map one and this one map two. Map one, I see the title is the United States Climate Zones. Now I've heard the word climate before, so I know that's related to weather. So that one's dealing with weather. And the second map or map two is called the vegetation regions of the United States. And vegetation is referring to what types of things grow there. So let's try and find Maryland on each of these maps. There it is. Uh, and I see Maryland, and I'm, let's talk about map number one. Um, I see Maryland is in two different climate zones. It's got a little bit of purple and a little bit of pink. And I know that because of the two colors, I can then go down to my map key and my legend down at the bottom, and I can see what type of climate zones Maryland has. And when I look down there, I see that Maryland has a mild winter, hot summer, and is wet, while another part of Maryland has cold winters, cool or warm summers, and is wet. I'm wondering why Maryland has two different climate zones. I thought we were just one state. I think that might be a question I come back to. On the second map, the vegetation map, I see that Maryland also has two different vegetation regions. I'm just drawing an arrow to back to Maryland. And I see that again, looking at the map at the, or the map key at the bottom, I see the mixed forest and the broadleaf forest. So Maryland has two different vegetation zones. But when I look really close at the maps, it looks like the climate zones and the vegetation zones are really similar. And I'm wondering if there are any connections uh, between the climate and the vegetation. I think there might be because I'm seeing some similarities. Are there any other similarities when you look at these two maps about different spaces that we see or any connections? On map one, I'm looking at this big space up in the top left corner, uh, which is dealing in, in Idaho, and it's in this dark purple area up at the top. And I see that based on the purple, it says high altitude, and it says there's precipitation may vary uh, with elevation. But when I look at the same area on the vegetation map, I actually see a similar shape. So check this out. I just put that same shape up on the vegetation map. And it looks like climate and vegetation have a lot of similarities and are certainly connected. I can also see in this area down here in Arizona or south of Arizona, a lot of desert regions. And I see that same space on the, the vegetation map. This is interesting and information I can definitely use to help us answer our essential question about why there might be environmental differences across the United States. I'm wondering if there are any other factors that might be contributing to this. Source two, physical map of the United States. Physical maps show different features and landforms. Mountains, rivers, lakes, large bodies of water all typically appear on physical maps. And you can see them here, your oceans, your mountains, and then you also have in your map legend uh, some colors, so deserts, grasslands, tropical forests. It kind of gives us a lot of different pieces of information. And when I'm looking at it, I'm seeing a really large uh, mountain range just west of Maryland. They're called the Appalachian Mountains. But you know, when I go back to thinking about the colonies that we've been studying about, the original 13 colonies, I remember that the colonies all stopped right around that space. And now I'm wondering if the Appalachian Mountains had anything to do with it. Maybe it was too hard to travel west of that. So maybe they just stopped. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. I also see that in the western part of the United States, we have the Rocky Mountains, and here are the Rocky Mountains. And the Rocky Mountains are a really big mountain range, and I'm wondering if 
any of the physical features on this map actually contribute to the climate or vegetation of certain regions that we looked at before. So let me bring up the climate zone map that we looked at in source one. So here are the climates and I'm looking for any connections. So take a look at these two maps and see if you see any connections. I'm seeing one really big connection that I'm seeing and it's related to the Rocky Mountains. I see this, this shape here around the Rocky Mountains and I'm seeing that same shape here in the United States climate zone. So it looks like the mountains, the Rocky Mountains, have definitely uh, some connection to climate. Now, I don't know if the climate causes the mountains or the mountains cause the climate because our information doesn't share that. Maybe that would be some information that we have to look deeper. But for right now, we know that there's probably a connection here. Now, if I were to change this map and take a look at the vegetation map from source one, I wonder if there are any other connections that you might see. So let me erase the red line that I drew earlier and let's take a look at these two maps and do we see any other connections? Just like before, I'm taking a look at these Appalachian Mountains and I notice on the vegetation map that here would be the Appalachian Mountains. So I'm seeing all of these purple colors would be east of the Appalachian Mountains and all of these darker blue colors would be on the Appalachian Mountains or west of the Appalachian Mountains. So I'm wondering if the physical features are impacting vegetation as well. So now we see the Appalachian Mountains contribute to vegetation. And we just saw on the map before that the Rocky Mountains contribute to uh, the climate in the upper Midwest. Hmm, this is really interesting stuff. And based on these sources, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm developing a good idea about why there might be environmental differences across the United States. We've gotten a bunch of different examples here. Um, geez, even as looking at this one, uh, even some more, if, I don't know if you see it, but here's this space down here in Texas. Um, and then you also see this area here. They're very similar spaces. Uh, why there might be connections. It's really interesting. So I know that there's connections. Now I'm wondering how could I use this to help answer our essential question? The next source is not required part of our lesson, but it could be used to help enrich or deepen your understanding about how environmental differences across the United States uh, are impacted or are different based off of their physical, climate, or vegetation regions and how they all have connections and impact places differently. Let's take a look. Source three is a land and resource map of the United States. People in the United States use land and resources in very different ways. Land and water provide many natural resources that are used to make products around the world and even in our country. But let's take a closer look at this map. The first thing I notice about this map is its title. It says the United States Land Use and Natural Resources. It's right there at the top. I also noticed that on this map, there are lots of little symbols, icons, or images, and I'm wondering what they might each mean. So I'm seeing, for example, all over Texas, there's this one. But I know that I can use my map key or my map legend down here at the bottom to tell me exactly what those symbols mean. So there's a symbol for oil, for coal, for iron, copper, gold, and silver. But I also notice states are shaded. So the shading also might tell me something and it tells me how the land is used. So here's manufacturing, if a state is shaded this way, it's for farming, for grazing for cattle, for different forests. Sometimes there's little used land that we're not using. And then there's some fish on the map for showing us where you can find uh, like fishing industry. But I also notice that there are different symbols in the East and the West. And remember, just using my compass rose, I can help figure out where the East and the West are. But let's start by looking at Maryland. I'm noticing that outside or just West of Maryland, I'm seeing all of these coal icons or oil icons, but I'm noticing that they're all in a line. And they go from Pennsylvania and New York all the way down to Alabama. 
But if I were to think back to our physical features map that we just looked at in our previous uh, source, I would know that this area right here is the Appalachian Mountains. So now I'm starting to wonder, the resources that are available in each place are different perhaps because of the physical features that are available. If I look out west and I start to look at the Rocky Mountains, which is this area out here, I'm noticing again, certain symbols show up where mountains are. For example, I'm seeing a lot of the coal or oil in that area. But then if again, I go back to that other map, I would also see that in the Great Basin, I would see lots of gold and silver is available. I bet that we could use this information to help us address our essential question about why there might be environmental differences in different regions across the United States. And I'm thinking about how land is used and also what resources are available which may cause them to be used differently. Now that we have explored different sources around the physical geography, climate, vegetation, and even natural resources, we are now prepared to develop a claim and a short explanation to respond to our essential question. Why might there be environmental differences in different regions across the United States? Over the next few minutes, and on a separate sheet of paper or a Word document on your device, please develop a claim in response to the essential question. Remember, a claim is a statement that can be supported with evidence. Using the sources we examined, try to support your claim with details and examples directly from the sources. Today, we conducted research and examined multiple sources to respond to our essential question. And I have to admit, I think you did an awesome job. Thank you for joining me today as we embarked on our deep dive into grade four social studies. Have a wonderful day and even better week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.